Hi guys, welcome to Velas del Encanto. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the five things you should be doing as soon as you get engaged. So if you're in love, just pop the question and you have that ring, make sure to keep watching. Congratulations, you're engaged. This is one of the most exciting times in your life. You've been waiting for this forever. But sooner or later, you're gonna have to start that wedding planning and you might get a little bit overwhelmed. Trust me, wedding planning can be one of the most stressful things if you don't have the correct tools and people to help you along the way. But don't worry, that's why we are here and we're gonna help you along this entire journey. So before you get crazy, here are the first five things you should be doing as soon as you get engaged. Number one, you need to compare notes. You and your fiance are now becoming one. That's the whole point of marriage. And with becoming one, you have to share ideas. It's so long, no longer just about you, but it's about combining his ideas and your ideas to make that big day. So you have to talk about what do you guys like? What do you don't like? What are your priorities for the wedding day? I say that each couple gets three non-negotiable. These are the three top three things that you must have of your wedding. This might be from the band that you want, from the venue that you want, the theme that you want. You know, you need to sit down and discuss what are these top priorities for you guys because that's gonna determine the rest of the wedding planning. Together with comparing your notes, you need to compare how much are you willing to spend? Who's gonna be doing the spending? Are you gonna be paying for it together. Are the parents of the bride paying? Are the parents of the groom paying? These are some of those tedious things that people don't really like to discuss, but they're really important to get out of the way as soon as you get engaged. Tip number two, you have to decide on a guest list. This is very important because the number of guests is going to determine the overall cost of your wedding. Remember, things for weddings are mostly priced by person. So it's important to determine how many guests you're going to have so you can figure it out also what your budget is going to be and what size of a venue you need to have. Very important things to keep in mind when deciding on a guest list. Tip number one, if this is not a long life friend and you haven't seen them in the last year or don't foresee seeing them in the upcoming year, cut them off the list, they shouldn't be invited. Tip number two, Kids, this is very important, because especially here in Puerto Rico where family is so important. You need to decide if you're going to allow children or not. I, I know that there's always some kids that must be there, like immediate family, and that's understandable. But you need to determine if you are going to allow all of your guests to bring their children. That's going to increase your guest count. And at the same time, it's going to be a little bit of a rowdier wedding reception. You need to figure out if you want kids running around, if you're having a formal affair, if you're going to have a little bit of something more casual, more family friendly. Uh, this is very important to decide early on so you can determine that along with your guest list. And tip number three, it comes to plus ones. This is another tricky situation, trying to figure out if you need to invite your friends with a plus one. If you have the budget, go for it, sure. Invite everybody, have everybody have a plus one. If you don't, you can be as strict as you need to be. My tip is, if your friend has been dating somebody for six months or more, their significant other should be invited. If they've been dating for six months or less, you might want to think about it if they need to be invited or not. Number three, you have to talk budget. This is going to be one of the hardest conversations to have. Nobody likes to talk about money, but this is crucial. You need to have a very specific budget from the beginning. You will always sometimes go a little bit over, but you need to have a guide so you can know what you are willing to spend on what. Once you come up with that overall big number, then you break it down into sections. We're gonna have another whole video talking about budget in the upcoming weeks, but I'm gonna give you a little bit of a breakdown. Once you have your big number, you have to divide it into all of your vendors, being photo, video, decor, venue, caterer, entertainment, uh, music, transportation, everything and anything else that you're thinking of having at your wedding. Remember when in tip number one, we discussed about those non-negotiables? Those are the first things that you're gonna allot your cost to so that you make sure that you could have those three things that you really, really want at your wedding. And then from there on, you divide the left, the remaining amount of your budget amongst the other vendors. 
I cannot say this enough, having a budget is crucial. It's just a guide that's gonna help you along the way, especially when you're negotiating with your vendors. You wanna know upfront how much you can spend per vendor so you don't waste your time and the vendor's time going, going towards somebody that you know you won't be able to afford. Number four, I know that not everybody can do this, but if possible, I highly recommend hiring a wedding planner. If you can and your budget allows it, I definitely suggest a full service coordinator. This person's gonna be there with you from day one, basically holding your hand, being your best friend, and making sure that you get that day that you've always dreamed of. They'll help negotiate with your vendors, they'll help keep you on track, they'll help keep you on budget, which is super, super, super important. So if you can, I strongly suggest hiring a full service coordinator. If you cannot, definitely try to do a day off. On the day of the wedding, you don't wanna have to be worrying if the decorator got there on time, if the rental company delivered the correct amount of chairs, if the photographer is taking pictures of everybody, is your bridal party on time. You really, first of all, you won't have the time to do it and you're gonna be completely stressed. Your wedding day should be about you. You should concentrate on yourself and leave the worries to somebody else. So definitely, definitely, definitely at least hire a day of coordinator, which you begin working with at least a month prior to the wedding. That person can kind of know what your vendors are and what you've been working on and they can kind of jump in at that point and just take over and you can just relax and enjoy your big day. Number five is to pick a venue. This is the biggest, most stressful part of wedding planning. I say this to all brides, finding a venue can take anywhere from one to three months. So don't get discouraged, don't get super stressed. It's hard, it's hard to find a lot of us have that vision that we've always had of what our wedding is gonna look like. So it might be hard to find that perfect place just like that. So take your time, do your research, figure out what are the capacities, what are the max capacities, what are the rooms that they have available, what are the prices that they have available, and at the end of the day, do they go with your theme? So don't get stressed. I know it's hard. You're gonna wanna have wanna book a venue immediately, but trust me, it takes a little bit of time to find that perfect place. But once you find that perfect place, I promise that the rest of the wedding planning is gonna go a lot easier and it's gonna be a lot of more fun. And number six, this is a little extra one. My most important tip of all, have fun. As I said before, this is one of the most exciting times in your life. You just got engaged. This only happens once, hopefully. So you wanna enjoy the ride. Make sure to take your time, enjoy the wedding planning process, enjoy your food tasting, choosing your decor, your cakes, all those little elements that are gonna make your big day perfect. And also, take a little time to celebrate with your friends and family, throw a little engagement party. I know those are not as popular here in Puerto Rico, but they're super popular in the States. And those can be as simple as just having a few people over at your house to celebrate your love or going even bigger with a bigger soiree at a venue with a caterer. But whatever you do, just make sure to sit back, relax, and enjoy this time with your friends, family, and most important, your new fiance. That's it for today's video. If you like this, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And as always, make sure to subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.